So here we are. Here's my brother Bryce, also known as Brother Bryce. Uh, or Tremendous Views. Did you put in Tremendous Views? I did. I did. And uh, so together we came up with this idea to do Queen songs that were not on their greatest hits album. So uh, basically, what we did was is Pick some of our favorite songs from Queen that do not appear on the, the first version of Queen's Greatest Hits, the U.S. and the U.K. version. I don't know that much beyond the works. You don't know that much beyond the works. So we just eliminated that one and went with, which for me was my Queen Golden Age, really. Yeah. Yeah. So it tied in nicely the idea of it that people who maybe watched the movie Bohemian Rhapsody or people who owned Queen's Greatest Hits, like think of Queen as Freddie Mercury's band, you know, like it's Freddie and the other guys. I thought, I bet you could put together an album's worth of other stuff that would surprise people and, 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 and teach them a little more about the band, you know, and the fact that it wasn't always Freddie who sang and stuff like that. And so I, th I thought that that was sort of the impetus of the idea. And uh, because Queen's Greatest Hits is one of the best-selling albums, I thought a lot of people might have only ever experienced that one particular album, you know? And they said, hey, look, I don't even have to buy any of the records. Um, you know what? I forgot to look it up. Um, what place is it in the top 50, do you know? Uh, I tried to kind of, it's somewhere, it's in the 40s. Otherwise, I'm sure you've picked a, a higher number. <laughs> You're not going to say, it's in the top 50 if it's number eight, you know? Right. You're going to say it's in the top 10, but I think it's like number 42 or so. Right. I would have said it had been one of the top 30 albums, but I guess that's me, and a lot has probably changed since that album came out because they've done so many different versions of it. Even though between the U.S. and the U.K., they are both very different. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the songs that we cannot use, the songs that exist on both the U.S. and the U.K. is uh, Killer Queen, You're My Best Friend, Bohemian Rhapsody, Somebody to Love, We Will Rock You, We Are the Champions, Fat Bottom Girls, Bicycle Race, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, Another One Bites the Dust, Play the Game, and Flash. Now, on the U.S., it has two songs that are not on the UK, which is Keep Yourself Alive and Under Pressure. And the UK has five songs that do not appear on the US version. Seven Seas of Rye, Now I'm Here, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy, Don't Stop Me Now, and Save Me. So those 19 songs we cannot use for this best of compilation. I did mine as if it was going to be, you know, okay, this is going to be the album. So okay. it's a. I think I did mine a little. I did mine a little different, hoping that you would pick some of the songs that I didn't pick. I didn't necessarily pick every song that, if this were a real thing that were going to happen, that I would put on the album. All right. So you're the guest. Do you want to go first on what you're? Okay, and so I guess we're going to take turns uh, revealing them, and so I'm going to lay it out. And so not only did we make this list of 19, but I, and I think you did too, tried to sequence it into a listening experience. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so it's a ranking. Yeah, it's not a ranking. Um, and so if I name a song and it's on your list, you can say, oh, that's on my list too. And if not, we'll, in the end, we'll have everybody's songs covered, but we don't necessarily have to cover each song twice if it shows up in different places on pe people's lists. Right. 
So my opening track, I decided thematically and musically, uh, Stone Cold Crazy from okay. uh, Sheer Heart Attack. Uh, I like that it's credited all four band members, uh, which is a rarity. I think it, that became more common after we stopped listening to them. Right. Uh, like their latter albums had a lot more writing credits that went to everybody. After Hot Space, I was too pissed off. <laughs> yeah. By the time I listened to the works, I still wasn't over Hot Space. Yeah. So I, I, I do want to go and get those albums now and check them out now. And it would be weird how I've liked Queen since what I was like, at least nine, that I don't know those songs very well. I know some of the hits, but even those not that well, I couldn't name them off. And so and I do want to apologize, my, uh, my AC died. And so I'm trying to keep it as dark to get as little heat going as possible. But uh, if I get a little sweaty, I'm, I'm going to consider it an, an homage to the Sheer Heart Attack cover. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Stone Cold Crazy is my number one for me. It's, it's a ripping, you know, guy who come tearing out of the gate. Not necessarily the hardest they ever rocked, but close to the hardest that they ever rocked. I would say their second hard, hardest rocking song. And so I love it. It's a grabber. It's a great opener thematically because they all got a credit on it. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So that's my opening track. Stone Cold Crazy. Stone Cold Crazy. That did make my list as well. And it is number 15. All right. So what's your opening track? Your opening salvo is Let Me Entertain You from the Jazz Album. Okay, okay. I think they started a lot of their concerts that way after a while. I know on Queen Life Killers, that was kind of the first time I heard it. I think that that, again, you talk about theme, that mm -hmm. just let me entertain you. That, that just, they kind of spell it out right there. Oddly enough, it is not the first song on jazz, which I would just let me entertain you starts off that way but i think it starts off the second side is it the first song or the last song on? see i've got the i've got the cd one but i don't have the i don't have the actual so it's either the last song on the first side or the first song on the last or you know what did it have anything on the inside that said anything no while you're looking i will say that was also on my list and i played with it as an opening but just because of the theme of the song uh, but I couldn't get away from Stone Cold Crazy. So that ended up in the middle of my pack too, uh, but at, at track nine. And it's one, I honestly, that I think it, I didn't love where it fell on, which I've, it's always been a CD of jazz. Uh, Cause I think it comes maybe on the heels of a couple songs that I don't love so much. Like in only seven days, is that before that on jazz? Now I'm trying to picture it in my head. Uh, jealousy is one I, I, did, I don't care for. Uh, I maybe tended to skip over right to Dead on Time, which I like a lot. I like Dead on Time. Yeah. Although, ironically, I didn't pick it for, it's not on my list, but I do like the song Dead on Time a lot. But it's got a yeah. lot of the feel of Stone Cold Crazy to me. So, you know, it's just like. Yeah, yeah um, when they had that fast paced metal sound they, they could do it really well yeah if they wanted to blister they could blister my daughter liked let me entertain you and i i, I gained a new appreciated for, appreciation for it in the last decade or so that was a freddy song if i'm remembering correctly and lots of very freddy lyrics but yeah it's very much a yeah just let us entertain you we'll do whatever it takes to entertain you <laughs> Speaking of entertain you. There you go. What's okay. your number two? My number two is Liar from Queen. Ah. From the debut. Now that one actually was released as a single, but didn't make uh, the charts anywhere. Cat. Sorry. Cat's in the computer. It's driving me crazy. All right. Number two, Liar. <laughs> yes. From Queen. The album and the band, <laughs> obviously. Um, 
but yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the de the debut, but I do like Liar. I think it's interesting that it was released, and and funny that so neither Keep Yourself Alive nor Liar made the charts really when they were initially released. And I guess Keep Yourself Alive, which is on the U.S. version of the greatest hits, was reissued. I think maybe in the wake of Killer Queen, right? Uh, where it, it still didn't chart highly. It made the top 100. It, it like scored like 82 or something, but uh, not really what you'd call a hit for "Keep Yourself Alive." But that was in a re-release, so none of the singles released at the time that the debut came out really charted or made any chart headway. "Liar" actually makes it in at mine is my third song on my comp. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh... I actually heard that song before I knew it was a Queen song. And when I found out it was a Queen song, it blew me away. And the first place I heard it was, it was the theme for um, the Old Grey Whistle Test. Hmm. So I don't know if you ever remember watching that, but I watched that a couple of times while we were in England. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I remember it, but I, for some, I don't picture Queen music going along yeah. with it. Uh, so it's basically just the the old gray whistle test was the intro to liar oh yeah i don't remember that but it's a good song it's a good song i can't say that i know it inside and out i don't know the first two albums inside and out that i did not have them until fairly recently in the 2010s is when i bought uh, they issued some box sets uh, that broke their career into sort of five album chunks. And I right. got the first two. So that was when I first acquired Queen, Queen 2, uh, Flash Gordon, and Hot Space. And I didn't tend to play it. I, I don't necessarily have the, the greatest memory of the of listening to the that first Queen album or Queen 2. But uh, pulling it out, it, it was an easy choice for me. Liar was like, yeah, that's a solid tune there. Yeah, that was definitely going to come in on my list as well. Uh, and it, but that's because it worked out well, too, with my second song. So my second song is The Prophet Song. Mm -hmm. Now, I get people might not like that one so much. I don't know if it made your list. It didn't make my list. And so that was one of the songs that I was hoping you would bring up because I knew I wasn't going to. And so in this weird made up triangulation of this pretend compilation, part of me says, God, eight minutes, that's too long. <laughs> it's too long for the, you know, it's like if Bohemian Rhapsody was <laughs> at six minutes, you know, was controversial. Album. What's that? They're both on the same side of the album. Yeah, yeah. You have the record of that. Oh, there you and go. The Prophet song is the first song on the second side. And then Bohemian Rhapsody is the second to last. Yeah. Yeah. I had some imaginary, so it's a Brian May song. Yeah, I think it's his, his crack at an opera. And so, yeah, so I, th I think it's a great song, but it felt like, again, in this weird imaginary scenario, you know, like there would be an edit to make it onto the comp, which is dumb because this is just us making a playlist. But right. it felt like what they would cut out was the most interesting part, sort of the, you know, the echoing part the, mm. with the delays and the delays. That's, the, that's, the, that's kind of the fun bit of that song. Yeah but that's a totally arbitrary thing. Songs because out of all the ones I got left, that was probably the longest. And I just, I put it right there at the beginning. Yeah, I just like all the vocalizations. I could see how some people think it's weird, but the more you hear that song, you just kind of get into it. And I just like how it does the, you know, the voices and then they stop and then it's boom. You know the guitars and drums kick in, and and I almost want to. It almost seems like a Bohemian Rhapsody prelude or something. Mm -hmm. That it's an epic song, but it does 
it's a little bit more coherent than Bohemian Rhapsody is. And supposedly, uh, I heard that he it was a dream, like the result of a dream. He had a dream and woke up and wrote this song. Yeah, well, it could be because yeah, it, if I remember the song correctly, what I get from it is is basically yeah, the guy is trying to tell warn people and nobody's listening to him. Yeah, and they find out in the end that he was correct. <laughs> <laughs> So a touch of irony in that song. There you go. But yeah, it's a great song. I did, didn't make my list for arbitrary reasons. Length and, you know, song distribution, trying to pick, you know, from all around and stuff. And I had a couple from Night at the Opera that I wanted more. So yep. you ready for my number three? You got more. Yeah. Nope. Your number three. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what is your number three? My number three is... Strangely, my melancholy blues from News of the World, which is another song that it took somebody else. It took a friend of mine, his appreciation for it, for that to really shine through for me, because I'm still to this day, I'm not crazy about the opening. Um, so it's the last song and it's a good album closer. Uh, but the, you know, another party's over, where it feels very floaty and piano-y. And very loud. So you know, yeah. It Never crazy like about that. Uh, but once the song actually kicks in, you know, but won't you let me, you know, that part. I like that part a lot. I, I really do. So I'm still to this day, I'm not crazy about the first 30 seconds or so of the song. But I used to skip it all the time because because of how little I liked the first 30 seconds of the song. That was one of those mass songs for me for a long time. But I, as I've been listening to Queen again uh, the last maybe 10 years, um, I have a much greater appreciation for that song too. And because and it, it does have a crescendo, but it is a very mellow crescendo that comes from an yeah. even mellower frame of reference, you know? Yeah, it's a very end of the night at the club He's kind of song. Been drinking. Yeah. Oh, this is the last song of the night, and then we're all going home. Yeah, so it has that feel, and it does that really well. Uh, but I had a song that I wanted to be my closer, and so it didn't make the closing status, and so I thought I would program it against type and put it near the front. There you go. There you go. I was just going to say that. You put the end of the night song at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, my number three was Liar, so we already talked about that. Okay. So what is your number four? My number four is Action This Day from Hot Space. Ah. Now, this is one maybe my most controversial choice. I feel like if you were to hear this song, and it's funny because we talked about it a little earlier today and you're like, I think that was one of the rockier songs on it, but I don't even remember how it goes. I think if you listen to the song and you were told that it was an outtake from the game, you would groove on. If it, you were able to disassociate it from Hot Space, that... I don't know if I could... <laughs> that, it just listen to it as a song you know, you pull up the song where you're not looking at the album cover that drives you crazy or you're not, you know, just a song. It's a kind of a cool call and response song between. So it's a um, Roger Taylor song. And it might be one of the first Roger Taylor songs that Freddie sort of has lead vocals on. I mean, it's got a cool, it would fit very easily with Crazy Little Thing Called Love and another one bites the dust and you know like rocket prime jive which is another roger taylor song but it, it sounds a lot like roger taylor's contributions to the game it's not a keyboardy at all i don't even know that it has so it's a guitar song but a very simple doots, 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 you know and then a just kind of a bouncing boom 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 I'm making that note right now. Listen to again. Roger Taylor will, will kind of growl a, a line about something, you know. And then Freddie will take it and kind of repeat it, but in a very Freddie way. 
Right. And this world is using me. You know, it's got a good. It's 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 not a great song. You know, and again, I I, I picked it because. I wanted to pick a song from Hot Space. And I, I don't want to say it's unfairly maligned. I think it's very fairly maligned, you know, as right. a record. But I, that doesn't mean that I don't think that there's anything worthwhile on there. And I think Action This Day would surprise you in just how the game-ish it is, you know? And uh, right. No, it's probably been better part of 40 years since I listened to that album. Yeah. Oh, I, I I like Under Pressure, but I, I just remember listening to that album and thinking, what the fuck is this, man? You know, that album literally, not literally, but figuratively <laughs> broke my heart, man. It was just like, that is not, that is not what I thought of as Queen. Yeah. And even if the works was better, it was still a struggle in yeah. a sense. Still tainted. It was still tainted. I was still still angry. <laughs> so anyway, so the, I, I encourage anyone to go out at that as a as a Queen song you may have missed out on. Uh, look up Action This Day, and it's not bad. You know, it's not bad. Right on. My number four is Spread Your Wings. Okay, so that's another one that was released as a single. Right. Where in the U.S. or the U.K.? Uh, I forget. It may have just been the U.S. and like Japan. Mm. There were a couple, but I didn't research because it's not on my list. It's a good song, but it's not on my list. You remember who that "Spread Your Wings" is a Freddie song? Um. So yeah, "Spread Your Wings" is a John Deacon song. Oh. Uh, yeah, I just like that song. It's just kind of you know get out there do your thing go out there and live your life and I've always liked that song I, yeah. I always thought one of the more epic songs that they've done not, maybe not epic but I guess on an advisory level you know kind of like your best friend how that song is it's kind of a more dramatic version of you know just life advice yeah just life advice and get out yeah so that's my number four okay my number five is the millionaire waltz from millionaire. the day at the races that one was on the short list it didn't make it on mine but that is a good song too and so that one as we were talking about this i'll reiterate what i uh, said about it to me, it was good that it wasn't a single because it, it felt like it was a Bohemian Rhapsody for A Day at the Races, which was the album that followed A Night at the Opera, which is the album that had Bohemian Rhapsody. So it kind of a big dramatic thing uh, rather than going into uh, operatic territory necessarily. It, you know, they kept it a waltz, but it had the same kind of, you know, here's the slow part, you know, and the thoughtful part. And yet there were parts where the where you know the big guitar, you know, Brian May would layer and layer guitars and stuff and uh, just had movements and sections and stuff and it felt very do they a little bit not sample, but do they rip off a little bit of the blue Danube and that and the guitar so Yeah, that's Blue Danube, isn't it? Um, maybe not. Maybe I like it. It's another one that it, that it took me a little while to appreciate. You know, I think the the Freddie songs in general, when when we were little, I think Brian May songs were a lot easier to like because they were more straight ahead rock and roll songs in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Right. Um, and so something quite as as. Freddie <laughs> as the millionaire waltz you know he was very eclectic and he was a master at piecing together completely separate you know profit song aside there's not a lot of Brian May songs that feel like they've got 
sections and movements and stuff the way that a lot of Freddie's songs tended to. Right. Well, he was a big fan of opera and classical music. And so, but yeah, his, his ability to, to make those left turns and songs and stuff that were, I guess, hallmarks sort of a, a prog rock, but it never felt particularly progish to me coming from Freddie. Like he right. was just able to beautifully segue songs into very different sounding sections. And so I feel like the Millionaire Waltz, if it had been released as a single and found any sort of success, it would have lessened the uniqueness of Bohemian Rhapsody. It would have been like, oh, this is what Queen does. They do big arty bombast, you know, in. And they always do tend to have one of those kind of songs on every one of their albums. That borrows heavily from classical music, but doesn't actually do any uh, classical music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're still playing bass, guitar, so it has all of those classical tropes in it, but they're doing it without an orchestra. Yeah. I think if they have any orchestrated songs in this time period. Yeah, I don't think that they do. And I think that there may be a thing that, and I don't know if they're synths or actual, but something like Who Wants to Live Forever or like Princes of the Universe or stuff, later stuff that I don't really know very well. I'm trying to picture it, and it sounds more like something they would have put strings on than... Right. I mean, they just had, they had Brian May and Brian May would be your orchestra, you know, and he was fantastic at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just layers of guitar. That, that's ahead. the that, thing, they really do that classical sound without having a classical backup. Yeah. A orchestrated version of that song would be very interesting to hear, actually. Yeah. How, you know, how would I get that, what was it, uh, Strauss, like that Strauss type feel to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my else? number five is uh, March of the Black Queen on Queen 2. Okay. All right. And I think that that is a Bohemian type, Bohemian Rhapsody type song that they did uh, way before they did that. So two albums before. Again, it's much more coherent. Um, I do like their storytelling, you know, and it's just, uh, again, it's another one that seems to have a lot of movements in it. There's bits on there that you just can't sing along with, you know, he speaks so quick when he does them. Uh, I just, yeah, that to me, that's one of their big storytelling songs. They're not so much like Led Zeppelin would kind of borrow hev heavily from Tolkien and to me, Queen would borrow more from Lewis Carroll. The Ogre Battle is kind of inspired by Tolkien, I think, but really they, they look to uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland over, you know, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So what was your number six? My number six, and it's saying, like, maybe you're going to be heading into the same territory here. My number six is Dragon Attack off of uh, <laughs> the game. That's my number six. <sighs> All right. So, Must be brothers. <laughs> that was totally a guess because we sort of had mentioned Dragon Attack earlier, and then you had mentioned thematic chunks that you had yours in. It's funny, the, the game... Uh, was when we're talking about the songs that weren't allowed, uh, that the game had more songs, four songs out of the 10 were uh, cut from the from the eligible songs because it had Save Me, uh, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, Another One Bites the Dust and Play the Game. I think they all appeared on the UK version and All But Save Me appeared on the US version. Uh, right. So it was a much smaller pool to kind of choose from but uh, Dragon Attack is a great Brian May jam I don't know that the lyrics mean a whole lot of anything it gives them all a chance to shine yeah that's there how is I song is that it's got the do 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 so it's got the cool bass he he wails when he does his solo on there um 
it's 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 almost more like a we are queen this is what we do type of song you know what i'm saying it's a call yeah. to to arms to me almost and it's, a dragon attack is such a beautiful way to kind of highlight that song because it does you got a bass solo a guitar solo a drum solo even freddie mercury solos in it and it just that is still it's hard to say what my top three songs are but that's either one or two it goes back and forth what it could be with one or two from the game or from queen from queen oh wow. but that that was the album that made me want to play drums in band ah. because i could fi i figured out that that little da -da 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 -da. boom 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 <laughs> yeah but it's a great groove but yeah what the take me to the room where the red's all red and the black's all black take me back to the shack jack i don't know that it means anything i know it's got to be mac is referring to the new producer because that was version of mustafa <laughs> <laughs> there you go but, all right yeah. so on six so what's your number seven uh oh that yeah that was both of our number six uh so my number seven is my one queen two track is the loser in the end that is uh then introducing the uh the roger taylor element now roger taylor wrote action this day but it didn't feel in the 70s roger taylor would basically contribute a song or maybe two per album that he sang it seemed like there was no chance that it was ever going to be a single and he knew that but it was like it was worth it to sing on his own songs and he had this just kind of sort of classic i mean it, it, it's like roger taylor songs were the blue collar queen songs he you know he wrote about working on cars and you know going over to the bar and drinking and it was very funny to me that everybody else kind of had this pomposity you know the whole queen thing but roger taylor songs were very yeah you know I would play some rock and roll music, you know, and he uses the words rock and roll in almost all of the songs that he writes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, he had a much more gritty sound to his songs. They, and a lot of times they, they do feel, when you first hear them, they feel a little out of place on those albums. Yeah. But then as you get to those albums, you kind of feel like they, they fit right in there. It's a good blue collar rock and roll guitar song you know and doesn't feel like it i mean i think if there's an album where there's a sore thumb like you said they all kind of the first time you hear those albums those songs hit those roger taylor songs kind of stick out but i think in the midst of ogre battle and march of the black queen and the fairy fellers master stroke and all these this particular roger taylor song really sticks out like a sore thumb on queen two right right but in a good way to me because it's i it's probably my least favorite queen album is queen two um like a lot of songs on that album that might be higher up in the ranks for me as just far as albums yeah it would have to be two or three in my top of, of there they, they go all over the place on that album and i do like the the bombastic kind of drums that he plays in Loser in the End. Boom, 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 you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's got some weird delay on it, too. So when he hits, like, the snare, it's like, tut, 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 you know? Yeah. So you're already experimenting with stuff at that time with tape, and, and uh, I think that's kind of his version of working with that a little bit but not too much it still has that rt grounded sound to it you know mm -hmm. it's cool i'll move on to my seventh okay which is the battle theme from flash gordon the battle theme it's the dun 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 where flash is driving that spaceship right into Ming's fortress. Yeah. And it, it, dude, that just, even when you hear that album without seeing the movie, it just gets you all riled up for as stinky as that movie was. 
So, I mean, they even used it uh, that song on Ted when they were, you know, make, making fun of that movie on on uh, that movie Ted. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I was gonna put in Voltaire's theme as well, but it was kind of messing up my order of what I wanted to do. So my favorite thing about about Battle Theme is it, it's got Brian Blessed on it, where he does the dive between Voltaire's theme. He says it in that one a couple of times, and then he says it in the, in the battle theme as well, where he, you know, he did that thing where he goes, Flash Gordon, you know. Mm -hmm. Who wants to live forever? Dive. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how he always said dive just before he would dive. There you go. Yeah, it's a little difficult for me to pick from Flash Gordon because of the movie samples and stuff uh, right. that are going in there. But I think, and I didn't yep. listen to this one extensively, uh, I did end up pit pulling one song just for sort of, you know, covering all my bases sake. And it's coming up a little bit later, I guess. Okay. But not that song. Not that song. And so, yeah, I always, I always like battle theme. I just think it, it, it sounds exactly how it's titled. Dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. And then also you have the sampling from the movie. So when you're hearing it on the stereo, what's great about it is, is they'll, you, you can hear the laser shots going back and forth between. So you hear it go like, oh. and then you hear one go, Dum! So, and they do travel between the speakers. So I do quite enjoy the stereophonic ride on that song. There you go. <laughs> Probably make a playlist with, the, with these all in my order. Yeah. So what's your number eight? My number eight is number 39 or the song 39. And that is from Night at the Opera. Yes. Yeah. And so I went back to back. And so this, I was having some problems with my programming a little bit. I couldn't, in the end, I couldn't get away from this. So I went from my Roger Taylor song, Loser in the End, to my first Brian May sung song, uh, 39. Mm -hmm. uh, but especially when, so this is one I remember from being very small that always seemed kind of super, super profound. And the whole, you hear me call, though you're many years away and the way that that's done and kind of, you know, phased from the speakers and stuff, especially the last time they do it. Um, that always got me right there when I was little, you know, and so I, that, that was one of my favorites when I was young. I like the, the acousticness of it, you know, they don't have a ton of necessarily acoustic material. And it sounds like an old folk ballad. Yeah. Almost like Queen's version of a song called The House Carpenter, <laughs> which if anybody wonders, I did a video about. <laughs> that sounds fascinating. I would want to watch that. Fascinating about The House Carpenter. And this is Queen's version of the House Carpenter. So actually that exactly. song 30 or <laughs> didn't make number 39. It made number nine. Oh. So uh, actually 39 was my ninth song. Okay. And so, yeah, I like that song too. It's very, it's very balladic, if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but uh, yeah. And the that's fact that there's a story, that there's something deep going on, and, and I, I think it was something that just didn't make sense to me when I was a kid, because it's, it's, it's presented as a story that sounds like sailing away, like they're sailing. But yeah. it's actually about space travel. But because of the, the acousticness of it and the old timey sort of feel of it, uh, the, the idea that you know the many years have gone, though I'm older but a year, you know, your mother's eyes from your eyes shine to me was them being out in space. And, oh, wow. I never took it that way. Yeah. yeah. And because of his whole, uh, you know, Brian May being the astronomer and, you know, that is his science guy. Oh, he, yeah. 
It's like a guy going off, sailing off to sea. Yeah, so that whole your mother's eyes from your eyes shine to me. It's like, and so for my life still ahead, pity me, you know, because he's come back. What was he, what passed for a year from him is like the alien movies, you know, being in hypersleep. Like when Ripley got back in Alien 2, her daughter was already dead. Right. Because if you could travel to the nearest star and you went out there at light speed and came back, you might age a, a year, but 75 on the earth yeah and so that's what that is that's what that's what that whole 39 that's what that travel when they come back a hundred years have passed oh man see I, you always remind me how dumb i am and uh, uh yeah i thought that was about going off and sailing off and i never picked up on that and it's probably just because of the style that it was done yeah so it has that old folky kind of feel to it but it's about wow. yeah space time quantum physics, whatever that is, but uh, yeah, and so, yeah, pity him for his life ahead, because he came back to an Earth where everybody he knew when he left was dead, and so even though a year had passed, a century had passed here on Earth, and so that felt very deep and profound and sad. I mean, not that I knew that when I was listening to it when I was six and seven years old, of course, right? but it was something that never quite lined up lyrically. They're like, where even when I listened to it back then, I remember thinking, you know, how, why has time passed for you, but not, or not, time has not passed for you, but it has passed for them. You know, what is it about this boat? But it hadn't occurred to me that they weren't on a boat, you know, that they're setting off, not to sea, but to space. Right, well, I'm 50 and I just now realize that. <laughs> So there you go, 39, beautiful song. Definitely check it out if you don't know it. All right, and that's my number nine. My number eight is All Dead, All Dead from News of the World. Another, yeah. Like the sound of that one. It sounds like almost almost ragtimey to me, but without being ragtimey. It's like a it's shuffle. Like a ragtime. Yeah, I think they call that a shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, um, that's what really bangs it out as far as just a mellow song, but it, it that's another one that crescendos as well, you know, it kind of builds up, builds up, and then, you know, he just kind of finishes out. It's almost like a weird fairy tale to me whenever I hear it. Even though, again, that's not necessarily one that makes a lot of sense to me either. Yeah. So I'll probably sit down and pay attention to the lyrics a bit better. Because that's the Brian May, because Brian May sings that one, right? He's, yeah. Yeah. So clearly he wrote it too. Um, but yeah, I like that one too. It makes me laugh a little bit. It's probably not supposed to, but it does make me laugh. The idea, you know, just the, the downer of the title, All Dead, All Dead. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, not on my didn't make my list, but I do like that song. Of course, I was going with a theme too. So I had, you know, the prophet song, liar, spread your wings, the march of the black queen, dragon attack, battle theme, all dead, all dead, and then number nine was thirty nine. So okay, and my number nine was let me entertain you, which we already did, and so I'm just looking at the forty minutes, whatever we got for this Zoom call. And we, we call that side one. There's side one of our compilations. One of our compilation. I was thinking about asking you about that too. Ooh. 